Good morning, my merry band of faithful ones. Look at you here this Sunday. And didn't we get a pretty day? If you were here last Sunday, do you remember the wind whistling through this room? My hands were blue after two services last Sunday, so uh, this feels like spring uh, in comparison. But Merry Christmas. I'm so delighted to see you all out here on this first Sunday after Christmas. It has been a busy weekend. And I thank you all for being here and supporting our, our little church. If you would all please stand now and join in singing uh, verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn number 98. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll sing the Gloria together. shine forth in our lives. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewel. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stay together, Psalm 147. Worship, Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with wise sweet. He sends out his command to the earth, and then his word runs very swiftly. St. Paul's epistle to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say, and please keep me out of your way. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, in the last few weeks, our readings have centered around the John the Baptist and his role in the life of Jesus. And today is no different. We've hear, been hearing about him in the Gospel of Luke, but now we get this from a different source. The Gospel of John pops in, and I'd like to share a bit about the origins of John's Gospel. First, it's not to be confused with John the Baptist in any way, for the gospel is not named for him. While it is attributed to one of the original disciples, specifically John, the son of Zebedee, the gospel never itself says who wrote it. Scholars consider it anonymous, just like the other three gospels. But it's really not important to know who wrote it. And why is that? Well, instead of being the work of one author, it is seen as representing the work of the entire early Christ community. I stress this because the New Testament is not an individualistic document, but the church's book, written, preserved, translated, and interpreted within an entire community of faith. Imagine a bunch of editors working all together to get a new story out. And the Gospel of John came along to offer a theological interpretation. John is unique in that sense. John tells us the why of Jesus' ministry and what was important. The main purpose for John seems to be interpretation. By the time John was written, and it was the last Gospel laid down to parchment, the majority of followers of Jesus were now Gentiles. They did not have a long Jewish history that followers reading the earlier three Gospels had. For me, this makes John so relevant because the majority of us do not have a Jewish perspective. 
like those early Gentile believers, we too attempt to interpret a faith conceived in biblical and Jewish terms to a secularized world. The Gospel of John provides a biblical model for the mission of the church in every generation to in interpret its faith anew. Now John reflects the situation of a Christian community sometime later in the early community's life, at a time when the parting of the ways between the Jews and these new Christians had become clear and oh so painful. We can understand that painful parting between Christians and Jews of old, even today. We hear the echoes of it when we look at the acrimonious tearing apart between conservative interpreters of the Bible and those who follow what's known as the critical thinking method of Bible interpretation, especially when it came to the ordination of women and gays and lesbians in our own denomination. Our look at the wrenching that is happening within groups of Christians as some ally themselves closely with politicians that others find not to be the exact model of Christian faith. Some find this hard to reconcile. John is important in that it shares info not found anywhere else in the Bible. And it's important to know that it is from John's gospel that we get the details that let us know that Christ's ministry on earth lasted for three years. The other gospels all mysteriously limit it to just one year. And here in today's reading, we have John the Baptist who very much had his own disciples, his own followers, ready to lay down their life for him. There was much confusion around John. People were watching for a Messiah, and many thought he was it. John was charismatic, entertaining, full of inspiration. But John had no problem letting people know that someone else greater than he was coming. John wasn't the light, but John was the one that pointed to the light. And in John, there's a lot of the language about the word. Now y'all know how I love to dig into the meaning and interpretations of words. Well, the original Greek translation for word is logos, and it has many, many meanings. Here are a few. Speech, discourse, language, thought, reason, message, account, document, and book. As I said, just to name a few. It was a catch-all term. Logos was a term used by theologians and philosophers, both Greek and Hebrew. And in Hebrew, the word was an agent of creation, the source of God's message to his people through the prophets. In Greek philosophy, the word was the divine essence that held all things together, God's ideal pattern for creation. I love that. God's ideal pattern creation, the essence that holds everything together. John's usage of the word also shows clearly that he is speaking of Jesus as a human being, but at the same time as the creator of the universe, the ultimate revelation of God, the living picture of God's holiness, if you will. In sending Jesus to earth, God was revealing something new about himself. John is trying so hard to interpret for us the history of the other three Gospels and of the life of Jesus. And in the coming weeks, there will be the opportunity to explore this more. There are many, many fascinating stories about Jesus about to come in our lectionary. In the meantime, I want you to remember what I said about John the Baptist's role to reflect 
the light of Jesus and point us to him. And if you think about it, isn't that really our role too? John the Baptist points us to Jesus and in doing so, he sets the most wonderful example for what, for what we are supposed to be doing. Pointing people in our lives, in our sphere of influence, to Jesus. I hope we will all get busy about that. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Amen. If you would all please stand as you are able, and turning to page five in your bulletin, join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, our God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, but one union with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us play, pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Bridgehampton and every community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the communion of St. Anne's and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To be the Lord our God. I'd like to offer a special prayer today. Um, you may have seen the news this morning that uh, Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu passed away um, overnight. Uh, at 90 years of age, 
and I had the great honor of working for him for one amazing weekend in New York City when I was in seminary, and I will be sharing that story and um, his how he touched me in my life during that time um, at another day. But at this moment, um, this most holy of men, I would like to hold up and pray in this way. Into thy hands, O Lord, we commend thy servant Desmond, our dear brother, as into the hands of a faithful creator and most merciful Savior, beseeching me that he may be precious in your sight. Wash him, we pray thee, in the blood of that immaculate lamb that was slain to take away the sins of the world, that whatsoever defilements he may have contracted in the midst of this early life, being purged and done away, he may be presented pure and without spot before thee. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Please, everybody, have a seat. I'm delighted you didn't leave me here alone on this first Sunday after Christmas. We've had so many worship opportunities, and we've had a lot of visitors, um, people being very careful. We haven't had our usual crush on Christmas Eve that we normally would, but we had healthy, wonderful crowds. Um, and we're going to continue. Um, I, I await perhaps an email tomorrow on Monday from the bishop, but at this moment, uh, we're, we're going forward with all of our protocols being safe like this, wearing masks and keeping the doors open. I have encouraged you and continue to do so to bring a lap robe, um, a, a blanket with you. I have mine sitting up there, and I did use it the other evening um, to help you. We've got the heat going and the, and the filters going, and we're doing everything we can um, to keep things safe. Uh, Marines Haven, our January term, is coming up. January 5th is when we're doing this, um, and we've got several openings left. We're looking for an overnight host. Um, which I have done and uh, Joe Kelly's done. So if you're interested in possibly doing that, Joe will answer any questions that you might have um, for that. We, we serve up to 10 people. We had 10 people last uh, in December off of the cold streets um, brought in to, to keep warm. They have been vetted. Um, they are randomly drug tested. Um, uh, they're a, a safe crowd. Um, we make them dinner, we make them breakfast, we make the beds, we uh, do the laundry afterwards, and we also make lunches for them to take out on the road. They bring them to us in a van, and then they um, give them bus tickets to take them back to Riverhead. And uh, it's our way of helping those strangers that are less fortunate than ourselves, and we do it once a month. Um, so I hope that if you can participate this time, and if not, I hope you'll participate in uh, February, March, or April. Um, the office uh, will be at a diminished capacity this week as we recover. Can't tell you exactly the hours we'll be in and out, but we will be around if you need us to leave a message or send me a text. Um, as many of you know, uh, Diane uh, Scanlon is retiring uh, this week. This is her last week after 31 years. Um, we had originally planned to have a big celebration on January 9th with her family and all at coffee hour. 
um, but that's canceled for now. Uh, we will reschedule that in um, sometime in the spring, I hope, and we can all acknowledge her at that point. But on January 9th, she will be at this service. She'll be at both services that day for me to acknowledge her and for your opportunity to um, applaud and let her know how much she has given to St. Anne's in the last 31 years. Don't know uh, what we'll do without her. Um, God has been good and has sent us Jen Pike to be our new parish administrator. Uh, and Jen knows she has big shoes to fill. But if anybody can do it, Jen can do it. So, um, yeah, that's great news. So we, we go on. Um, anyway, just wanted to keep that before you all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. table and everyone is welcome to receive communion from it. I have gluten-free wafers. If you'd like one, just let me know when you come to the rail. If you would prefer a blessing when you come to the rail, simply cross your arms like this and I will be happy to give you one. And as many of you know, we are serving the wine from communion in small little glasses in a tray that um, Adeline will bring by you. When you receive your cup, if you choose to take the wine, when you're finished drinking it, uh, you part e going either to the left or the right and there are waste cans at the end for you to deposit your cup there. Our service continues on page nine in your bulletin. If you would all please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. 
Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and above all, and the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error and of truth, out of sin and to righteousness, out of death and to life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his death, death. we proclaim his resurrection, and we await, we await his coming to glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Anne and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found on page 14 in your bulletin. If you would all please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you, you have fed us with spiritual, spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Life is short, my friends, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. For everyone you meet is fighting an unseen battle. Now go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessings be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, is at the bottom of page 14. Please join in singing this wonderful carol.